uh, in this diagram, actually, I'm trying to depict uh, the the real status of and real uh, real place of work. Where does it fit? So uh, the 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 charity in in general uh, uh, in Quranic verses we can find for charity the term infaq has been used uh, as as a broader concept. So infaq uh, is uh, repeatedly used in Quranic verses do spending in the pious causes for charitable purposes in the way of Allah. And then from in fact, a, a narrower concept came in, uh, which is sadaqah. So from in fact, we narrow down, we reach to sadaqah. And then uh, the sadaqah is actually in the prophetic, ahad, in the context of prophetic ahadith, we can find that there are various forms of sadaqah. A sadaqah can be uh, material, monetary so we we use some money or some subject matter some item uh, uh, to do a charity so this can be a charity a form of charity another form of charity is non-monetary intellectual so uh, for example the prophet says that if you guide someone to the right path this is a form of charity uh, so uh, uh, intellectual uh, if you advise people for the righteous path. So this is also kind of form of sadaqa charities that is non-monetary or intellectual. Then uh, once we come to material uh, or monetary form of char charity, then we classify this into two. Uh, in Quranic usage, there are obligatory sadaqa and non-obligatory. Obligatory is sadaqat wajiba. So for example, zakat. Sadaqatul Fitr. These are Sadaqat Wajiba, which is obligatory uh, for those who qualify for the threshold. So this is Sadaqa Wajiba. And then second form is uh, Sadaqa Nafila, which is non-obligatory. You can, anyone can do whenever he feels so and participate in the reward program by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then uh, in the non-obligatory Sadaqa, uh, we categorize into two. One is absolute sadaqa, another one is non-absolute sadaqa. Absolute is the one where the donor is transferring the ownership of the subject matter uh, to the recipient. So the beneficiary will become full owner of that sadaqa and he can use in whatsoever manner he wants to do. So uh, this absolute sadaqa, the example of this absolute uh, non-obligatory sadaqa, is uh, once we help any poor uh, poor person with some money, we dole out, we give him, and immediately at the uh, at the same moment, the ownership of that money or subject matter transfers from the giver to the recipient to the receiver. Other than this, uh, compared to this uh, absolute sadaqa, there is another form of sadaqa which is non-absolute which means uh, in this category falls Arya, Maniha, Qard Hasan. Arya is something like, for, for example, someone needs uh, something for a time being, for a while, and I allow him to use. For example, someone needs my car for two days, three days, or, or someone needs uh, my pen uh, or my laptop. So I, I say, okay, you use it, and after two, three days, the same thing, you have to return this. This is non-absolute sadaqa. Why? the ownership is not being transferred. Another form of uh, non-absolute sadaqa is Qardul Hasan, where the ownership is transferred, but the recipient is liable to repay uh, similar uh, value uh, after the, uh, at the maturity. So this is non-absolute because the ownership is transferred, but the recipient will have to return it back. But this will be categorized into uh, a sadaqa because uh, uh, Fardul Hassan is interest-free loan and the giver is actually helping and uh, helping the receiver and this help is classified as a form of sadaqa and the giver will get reward for each passing day till the uh, Fardul Hassan matures. In this uh, non-absolute sadaqa there comes this waqf where this will have its own distinction the uh, the sadaqa is non absolute waqf the sadaqa is actually non obligatory sadaqa not nafila non absolute 
and then this will uh, imply suspension of ownership. So uh, neither the giver nor the receiver will uh, remain the owner of subject matter. As per the classical fuqaha, the ownership, with, uh, ownership of a waqf will transfer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, according to other fuqaha, this uh, ownership of subject matter will uh, actually uh, will be suspended and remain so no one will be owner. Why we need this suspension of ownership? Because if the subject matter of a sadaqa is owned by someone, either it is by uh, owned by giver or owned by receiver. So uh, the implication of this sadaqa will, uh, will be that once the person dies, this will become part of the varasa. Uh, and and his progeny or his uh, heirs will uh, will uh, actually will be entitled to distribute this. But the waqf has to be a continuous sadaqa. So the ownership of this institution cannot be transferred. Neither it can be sold or gifted. Uh, so this sadaqa can uh, neither be inherited nor be sold or gifted. Because uh, the objective of this form of sadaqa is that this will, uh, this will provide a continuous charity, continuous support. And this continuity of charity from this uh, sadaqa will actually uh, en enable the, the giver, the endowed or waqif, to receive spiritual rewards, the ajr or thawab. Islamic finance learning made simple and memorable.